So my first question for you today is who or what inspired you to become a lighting designer? On my uh, sophomore year at Howard University in 1973, uh, my best friend who was a junior at the time in lighting, um, sort of, he encouraged me to do that. I came to Howard thinking I was going to be an acting major. And he said, you know, there are not enough black people in the technical fields. I think you might be better in lighting. I've been watching you. And I don't think you're that great in acting. So why don't you give lighting a try and, and let's see. And so I started working with him on shows. And we had a roadhouse on campus. And I started making money, <laughs> hanging and focusing lights. And then I started designing there. And, and I switched my major uh, after my sophomore year at Howard. And I just fell in love with lighting. You have seen many changes in theater and the academy uh, during your career. What changes have excited you? What has excited me, I'm beginning to see there are more um, students of color, particularly African American, that are pursuing the technical fields. And um, a lot of that has, it, a lot of it happened while I was at, um, University of Illinois because I was head of the lighting program for 22 years and one of the things I made sure was that there were always students of color in the program not just lighting but in all the areas and also I was able to influence people at other universities to bring in students as well as hire because I got sick of people saying we can't find black people we can't find so and so so whenever an opening came up I said here's a person of color this person is really good so I'm seeing more, there's still not enough of us, mm -hmm. but there are more of us that are being um, are out there in the field. Mm -hmm. um, how would you recommend universities really embrace inclusivity and diversity in their hires, in their um, recruitment and enrollment of students, and in particular, attracting students of color to the design fields? How do I encourage them to do that? Mm -hmm. Well, I usually tell them, uh, particularly those who say they can't find people, mm -hmm. there are HBCUs, historically black colleges and universities, and what I've always recommended is that you partner with one of these schools. One of the things I did at Illinois, I partnered with schools like Howard, Spelman, University, I mean, North Carolina A&T, so there was like a steady, um, it was a pipeline of students, mm -hmm. stage managers, um, designers, lighting, whatever. So partner with the school. And you should really start early, you know, start with high school kids to bring them into your undergrad programs. Um, so there are ways, you know, there's no excuses to say I can't find anybody. One of your nominators referred to your drive to document, <laughs> and uh, uh -huh. which I love. Uh, to drive to document the work of um, people, of, of artists of color, um, playwrights of color, and she noted that this drive to document has changed, absolutely changed the course of theater and higher education. Really? Um, <laughs> yes, allowing um, what really all of your, your drive to document, what it has allowed us um, to do is to teach courses that couldn't be taught before, um, mm -hmm. to encourage uh, theaters to stage the work of um, women of color, um, particularly women from the African diaspora. So my question for you, is what advice would you give to young artists and academics of color um, about getting their work out there and um, documenting their experiences and their artwork? Wow, that's a hard one. Um, <coughs> they should just document the work. I mean, now you've got YouTube. It's so easy to get your work out there. Um, having a mentor, somebody who could you know, assist you in getting stuff. I mean, that was so important in my you know, in my career, I had amazing mentors that I was able to, they were able to help me network. Um, again, I, I don't know how much I can stress having a mentor mm -hmm. and, and a good advisor. I mean, that's how I got started. I wouldn't be where I am if I did not have these mentors. Mm -hmm. And like I said, now there's organizations, we have the Black Theater Network, that's our main focus, mm -hmm. is networking. Uh, we have a a competition called the Judy Deering Award. Mm -hmm. Judy Deering was an African-American uh, costume designer who passed in 20 years ago. So I started with another colleague. We have this competition. You know, It's for costume set lighting designers in, in college, undergrad and undergrad. 
Uh, one, that's one way we can find out who are the young black people out there designing. And those who are the winter, winners, um, we guarantee them mentorship and, you know, getting work, you know, getting their work out there or, or being able to design. So, and the same thing, we have a Randolph Edmonds um, scholarship where they write papers. So it's to get young people out there. Um, so BTN is great, um, but having a mentor is crucial. Mm -hmm. You want somebody who really care about what you're doing. And for me, that just, it comes natural. So when I, I find a student, I know they're very serious about what they want to do. And sometimes I have students who don't know <laughs> what they want, they want to do, and I have to sort of guide them. And then to see them progress, it just gives me a lot of joy. Um, I mean, you just have to be committed to that student. It's, it's a big commitment, um, but it's, it's just something I've just always enjoyed doing. I love to see my students flourish. Mm -hmm. um, so I don't know if there's any easy answer to what makes a good mentor. I don't know. I just think it's just something I've been good at, and I enjoy doing it. I just love seeing students, you know, excel. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, that's my favorite thing, too. Okay. <laughs> um, you are a prolific lighting designer as well as a historian, um, an editor of many, many books. Um, and so I'm wondering how you think your artistic work in the theater has contributed to your work as, uh, as a historian and vice versa. Vice versa. Mm -hmm. I think, um, ironically, not ironically, both have really enriched each other. Mm -hmm. I find that when I am working on a show, I usually know the history of what's going on. I, I, I love history. Um, and sometimes when I'm doing the research on a piece, um, I might be ahead of the game because I might know the person that I'm, I'm, I'm writing about. Um, because I work with so many playwrights. I do a lot of, con I do a lot of premieres. I mean, this year I'm, I'm doing like five premieres. Um, ironically, they're all historical pieces. Um, so it helps me in my lighting, and like I said, in my lighting helps me. My work as a designer helps me with my, my research. Mm -hmm. Say, for instance, if I'm, I'm studying contemporary playwright, if I'm working with them, you know, that, that's a really good end. Um, I just did a, a premiere by Dominique Morisot, and uh, it was really wonderful. She wasn't in the room, but she was there via Skype. She couldn't make it. Mm -hmm. um, but I love, because I do work on, um, playwrights, be they contemporary or deceased playwrights, um, you know, I'm there in the room with the material as well as designing. And I think a lot of companies hire me <laughs> because um, I know the history. I sort of come in as a lighting slash dramaturg <laughs> or historian. So yeah, so they, they both inform each other. Mm -hmm. And it's wonderful when I'm, when I'm teaching, well, I'm retired, but when I'm teaching my students, we're not just talking about the play. I have photographs, okay? If we're talking about a raisin in the sun, how many times have I designed raisin in the sun? Or if we're talking about a piece by Pearl Clay, you know, how many productions of Pearl Clay? So I'm always able to um, add that layer in the class. You know, here are actual photographs of the play, and mm -hmm. this is what the playwright thought. And mm -hmm. uh, another thing that I enjoy doing, I would always Skype in playwrights. You know, mm -hmm. um, here's the playwright. You know, you can talk to her about the play or whatever. Um, so that's one of the things I've always done. What is your philosophy of lighting design? I don't know if I have a philosophy of design because I design for that particular show. I can say that I'm not an ostentation, ostentatious lighting designer. Mm -hmm. You know, you're not going to walk away and say, oh my God, the lighting and the lighting. If, if my job is to complement the show, to support the play. So sometimes if I hear, oh, we didn't even notice the lighting on the show, that's that means that it worked for me. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, if it's a musical, that's different. But my goal is to support the show. So I don't want my lighting to be obtrusive or anything like that. Mm -hmm. um, I can say I love, um, I love the use of color in the show when I can use it. Of course, it has to work with the show. Uh, a lot of the shows I do are very realistic. Uh, so I love the image of having a psych or some type of background so I can change the mood with some type of sky or something like that. Um, but my lighting is, you know, I support the show. You know, it's usually you don't notice it. 
mm -hmm. like I say, which is, which is good. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it can be very dramatic. And again, if that's what the show calls for. Um, but it's, it's about the word, what the actors are saying. Mm -hmm. We want to be able to focus on them. Mm -hmm. Where is it that you would like to see theater go? I would like to see it become more inclusive in terms of the curriculum, and it's still not there. Um, I would still like to see more people of color in the academy. We're still not there. What I'm seeing, <coughs> unfortunately, my generation, as we retire, we're not being replaced. So a lot of these courses are disappearing. When I left the University of Illinois, I taught a course on African theater. Uh, African-American women. I taught a course on um, multi-ethnic theater or non-Western theater. Those courses aren't being there. The same thing when I left UNC, and I'm seeing it happen with a lot of my colleagues. So I think the students are being shortchanged by not having this in the curriculum. So I would love to see these departments step up um, with these courses. You know, some have, and but many aren't. You know, I've met students who know nothing about non-Western theater. Mm -hmm. So we still have a ways to go. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah.